Hi, welcome to Eco Action with Rachel Rackavan. I'm your host, Rachel Rackavan. I have a great friend of mine on the show today, and his name is Josh Inklevich. He's going to talk about Fit Farms and vertical growing systems. Josh? Hey, Rachel, thank you. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So, can you tell us a little bit about your history with urban farming? Sure. So, I started growing my own food maybe 15 years ago and, you know, backyard gardening, what have you. And after, this after having a fairly traumatic upbringing and definitely suffering from the symptoms of PTSD. I mean, heck, I think I spent eight years of my life behind razor wire fences and that included time in a maximum security prison in the state of South Carolina. And while, while down there, I took, went into horticulture class when I was in prison in North Carolina because I just couldn't keep myself out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we learned how to grow food, and we were the only people on the yard that had fresh vegetables. And so not only did I appreciate being able to put fresh jalapenos and tomatoes and having strawberries in the middle of a place with two fences and bunches of things around it, right. um, I also process. sold it. Mm -hmm. The food was terrible. Horrible of course, meat. it's Horrible like food. South and Carolina prison food. Yeah, yeah <laughs> um, can't really complain about it too mm -hmm. much because like nobody asked me to visit. Yeah, you, <laughs> you were really blessed because you had that opportunity. I did. Yep. Yeah. I, it was the second, like the second year that they actually had community college classes available, and so I think I completed three semesters of horticulture while there before I went to the hole mm -hmm. and losing the education opportunity. But oh. growing the food was uh it was important to me and when i got out i was poor i still wanted my i wanted those fresh vegetables and so almost from the beginning as soon as i had space i planted plants and i planted more plants and i planted a lot of plants and, <laughs> lots of, lots of plants. and I, I ultimately you know moved in my career and in the career it was it ended in being an executive and an oil and gas contractor and hiring people coming out of prison to give them the same opportunity somebody gave me, believing that that was the pathway to success. Right. For somebody, you know, recidivism and prison reentry being one of those topics that right. are now on the tips of people's tongues. Um, and I found that after five to seven hundred men that it wasn't a living wage job and lining frack pipe, because those became my customers naturally working in steel that uh, in Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania, doing this work over the last 15 years, 12 of it in a leadership role, oil and gas. So I really looked back at, when I looked at what my customers were, I realized that I really didn't want to make my living working with them. And what was it that impacted my life the most? And so I determined it was growing and eating my own food, and it took about eight or 10 years, and then no more PTSD. The AD, That's great. The ADD might still be there, but no PTSD. <laughs> Um, you just high energy. Don't listen to that. <laughs> oh, if you heard all the thoughts in my brain. <laughs> so that diet, that change of diet, and learning about my food system and the poisoning of the factory farming, factory farm food system, the herbicides, the pesticides, all these things I didn't know were in my food, and I definitely didn't want in my food. And I believe that by removing my my exposure to them, it definitely benefited, made an impact in my life. So you're a fan of Monsanto. <laughs> yeah, number kidding. one stockholder. <laughs> once, yay, Monsanto. Good work. Uh, so that, like, so the growing and eating my food made a major impact. And right. it's like, wait, this actually, I didn't do anything in my life right for about a good, I went to work every day, but self-care was not a component of my life. I, I made money. I lived a lifestyle. It was fun. I ate big juicy steaks with, yeah, it was mm -hmm. good. Um, eating my food and, and moving through years of just working hard and attempting to give other people the same opportunity. I recognize, you know, like this was a component, PTSD, didn't do anything right, ate bad food, drank lots of alcohol, just didn't exercise, didn't really take care of myself. But I ate well. And I woke up one day and I remember the day that I didn't scan the audience looking for threats that didn't exist anymore. And it, I wasn't like waking up in the middle of the night thinking I was sentenced to prison again. The number of times I've been sentenced to prison, it's at least a thousand. My Lord, don't. Ah, no, not again. <laughs> so how have you helped other people with this yeah. transition? So it moved into meditation. And so mm -hmm. I, I did that for a couple of, two, I think about two years before I quit that job. And so I left my career and I decided that it was growing food 
and mindful practice and developing a skill set that allowed me to earn a living wage that made the difference. And so that's what I, I embarked on a journey to do. So and that's when Heelcrest Farm started? Yeah, so okay. so in two, three years ago, maybe before when I started the journey, I'd met uh, a woman, Maria Graziani, and she founded Heelcrest Urban Farm. So it, it, in, it, was, it is one of the oldest urban farms in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. It was the oldest urban herb farm. And she used that with some other farmers to make the, and to grow the herbs necessary to make herbal teas and herbal tea juice popsicles. And you were working with Salud Juicery also, mm -hmm. correct? No. no, there's never, there was never any partnership with anyone except oh, okay. Maria. Just Maria. There, were, there was like, there were different surveyings of potential situations. Right. <laughs> so Maria and I were going to work together and Penn State Extension offered okay. her a great career opportunity uh -huh. to serve the, uh, the farmers in the counties around Allegheny County. Mm -hmm. And so she said, you want to take over the farm space? And this, so two years ago, not last season, but the season before, that began it. And we were, it was no budget, a little late in the year, and a group of us volunteers worked to maintain that space. My um, daughters and I came out and volunteered with you, mm -hmm. remember? Yep, mm -hmm. so like, we was just worked to maintain the space to think, okay, there was a one plan, which was Maria and I working together, and now there needs to be a different plan. Right. So last year, we got some funding, and the, awesome. The, the goal was to bring people onto the farm. We work in a greenhouse on the Goodwill campus in Lawrenceville where it's food and plants and making stuff with the intellectually disabled. And so the goal was to really utilize that greenhouse, um, build a vertical growing system that we, we did build um, pictures. And why would people need vertical growing systems? Well, in the city of Pittsburgh, the land is poison. And so there is the Allegheny yep. Conservancy does go around. And if you need your soil tested, they'll be happy to do it. And I believe it's free if you check online and see when the service is offered. Same with the water. Mm -hmm. So the, the soil, you can't grow in. It's full of heavy metals. And then space. Lead. Lots of lead. Yeah. Especially in the water. Ooh, we're at 25% lead levels, I think, right now. But, oh, dude. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. Our water's worse than Flint. So, I know, right? The water here is worse than Flint. And then the space it is always a consideration. So mm -hmm. in a vertical growing system where we can have, let's say, this one square foot, but we can grow in that one square foot here and here and here and here, now right. we're, we're... With we're, organic we're, soil and yep. good nutrients, we can add in whatever nutrients that we want. No weeds. Yeah, no weeds. <laughs> um, so what are some other benefits of the vertical growing systems? Well, for in, in the most important benefit, in my mind, is that our mission is to empower uh, people with barriers to self-sufficiency through mindfully rooted, what we call green steam workforce development. And so that That's combines right. growing your food, Amazing. <laughs> propagating your Amazing. plants, to growing them, to uh, processing them, learning how to eat them, hustling. Uh, this season, we intend to put the uh, entrepreneurship component. And so, last and you're year, you're doing this with disabled people now as well. Yeah, we work with the we work with the intellectually disabled at Goodwill. I get all my love shot. I, I really love working with that population, and I was so intimidated and never believed in ten million years that I would be making homemade pasta primavera, including the noodles, with people that sometimes you know they, they can't talk and they're overcoming so many different things that that they were born with and they're, they're working diligently to earn the opportunity to bust tables or to clean a bathroom or to mop like they're actually happy to be like I want to go get a job and go back to, to I want to mop I want to be a janitor and it's be put, put to work and they want to feel valuable yes and for, they, it gives them a sense of fulfillment it's right. not the minimum wage it's, it's, it's it has nothing to do with money self-sustaining it, it has to do with with independence, contributing. Independence as well. Correct. Absolutely. Yep. So you're giving them that. We're working to do that. Yep. And, and the, the group that we're working with, they have the most barriers to right. achieving independence. So whether it's, they, it's been great. Like from feeding, getting, getting the, all the clients to eat a sunflower microgreen. Yeah. And they're like, this is sunflower. And I showed them like this, the sunflower one is grown. And if you eat this sunflower right now, it tastes like a baby carrot, and you're getting all the nutrients it needs to turn into that big sunflower. And they're right. like, really? And I got them all. I mean, granted, my one little buddy, he took them and he put them in his mouth and went, oh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he tries everything. He spits everything out. It's all good. That's great. So yes, we 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 work to to be in that that greenhouse. Um, the goal this year is mm -hmm. to we're onboarding some youth in Garfield. Mm -hmm. You know, it's where I moved. It's where the farm is. We had the most number of shootings in the city of Pittsburgh last year. I do believe, at least in the first half. I and remember I think you were saying up. that you ended up farm, camping on your farm, and you were you were just like hearing shootings. This yeah, is serious definitely. urban farming. Yeah, there's serious <laughs> urban farming. If you're if you're in the middle of the city and you've got how many acres was I think it's it? three three acres of a farm right there in the middle of the city, and you're hearing gunshots. You know that you're doing good work. Very because close. You're bringing something that's totally different to an area that really needs it yes absolutely it was it was the there was the moment when i heard doo -doo 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 -doo, pop, pop, pop. and i'm thinking <laughs> oh man this wasn't quite what i not too this long this is not away. what i signed up for <laughs> yeah, i don't want to catch a stray bullet and then the other part of me is like this is exactly why we're here yes absolutely so last year we brought on local youth we engaged them in a variety of activities on the farm um, we engaged hundreds of college students in our surrounding community um, we, we did a pilot with two mothers exiting the prison system mm -hmm. and uh, we designed and implemented probably 50 different workshops for the intellectually disabled ranging from you know planting succulents which we then we let grow and they got to make their own little funky pot I love succulents. and give them away for Christmas presents so that was their Christmas present to someone Aww. to I play with wood and laser beams and 3D printers and, and CNC routers, so it's bringing together the growing and plus the, the making. And so we do a variety of projects bringing both of those together. Now, right now we're onboarding hopefully three youth. It's uh, from Garfield through the Bloomfield Garfield Corporation. Mm -hmm. Um, through a college and employment readiness program, so they work for 100 hours with local businesses mm -hmm. and they're paid through the organization to be there. That's wonderful. And we're introducing them to making through Hack Pittsburgh. It's Pittsburgh's oldest maker space, so they'll get to play with laser beans and a router and some other fun Is stuff. Is this for underprivileged children? Well, it's for a local Garfield youth. So I don't know the what classification. I'm sure that economic classification. I'm sure that there will be some economic uh, economic. Low income, Challenges. yeah, mm -hmm. folks or, or young people that will be involved. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then that's that's my role. And then working with a hip hop legend, he, Claude Paradise Gray. He's one of the founders of One Hood and their current advisor emeritus. He's definitely the only guy I've met that can sit down at a meeting and my name's Paradise Gray and I'm a hip hop legend. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> He's also the artist. I love of, hip hop. Right, me too. Yeah. He's also the artist in residence at Artist Image Resources over here on the north side. Air. Uh -huh. And so there we'll add screen printing and different artistic components um, to the laser cut wood and the other the the, the what we offer in the um, maker space. And then to top it all off, we're working with a hip hop urban boutique. It's mm -hmm. called Senseless. Mm -hmm. It's on the 5100 block of Penn Avenue. And that's the retail outlet and our, our support group so that we can have a place for the, the youth to, to come together. We do little workshops Make with them art. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Assemble the pieces that we may create in the makerspace or at air. And then we have Senseless to do art shows and a retail outlet. That's so great. that's to get us through the winter because obviously nothing's growing right now. No. <laughs> so creativity in the winter time and you've done a lot of work with mindfulness and then also with the growing systems more so in the summer and, and fall. Yeah and now we're, we're mm -hmm. pursuing the funding to uh, for the next batch of youth to build one of our growing systems. It's called the Grow Room. It mm -hmm. is big. It's uh, eight foot tall <laughs> by eight foot this wide. <laughs> <laughs> globe-shaped vertical growing system and so it's right. a big globe hopefully you'll be able to put pictures up or, or in some form or fashion yeah so we'll post some pictures absolutely yeah. and um, then... it's a big globe that seats five and it grows enough food for multiple communities and mm -hmm. fits within uh, the square footage of two raised beds and so you'll erect like, those four people if they need assistance yeah but it's pretty basic instruction it is said. it's all put together with rubber mallets and wedges and you would need a screwdriver to attach like the some sheeting not many tools not many tools mm -hmm. and uh, one of our focuses are community groups that do have a desire to have an innovative food growing system they can mm -hmm. be used to teach their students or to grow food uh, for whatever reason 
they want to grow food. I mean, my obvious Everybody theory is we all need food. fresh food that yes, doesn't have chemicals good, good in it. Good food with yeah. no chemicals, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So how is it that people can get a hold of you in order to participate in your workshops or to obtain some, you know, like coaching on growing systems sure. or maybe you want to help with, um, you know, all of these different things. How is it that people can get in touch with you to obtain a vertical growing system or with help on erecting a vertical growing system? How can they get in touch with Josh Inkler? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we have our Facebook is backslash fit, F-I-T farms. Um, Facebook.com so slash backslash fit farms. Fit farms, right. And our website, which is under construction, but it shows a gallery of the different types of projects that we created uh, or completed over this last year. And mm -hmm. that is www.farmingfamily.org. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, thanks again so much Thank for you. coming on the show. I really enjoy your energy and I enjoy <laughs> how your transformation has taken place, not just from you know, being, I guess, a convict to learning about the need for, you know, food and how it is that you can help other people with that, mm -hmm. you know, all the way to, you know, not just helping um, the, the disabled, but also helping underprivileged children and also helping the public at large with these vertical growing systems so that they can do this at home. And it's like, it's common sense. I guess it's like the, the four things that I feel really impact my life the most. It is growing and eating my own food, Mm -hmm. A mindful practice for the balance. Meditation and spiritual and natural healing, quantum physics. A pathway mm -hmm. to developing a skill set that will allow me to earn a living wage for anybody. I mean, we need mm -hmm. skill to earn a living wage. Absolutely. Nobody's just going to give it to us. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Training and development. the self-esteem that is developed from making and building things. And, Confidence and, and independence. Yeah, and like I, I think that all of us would benefit from having those four things. I mean, we all need those four things we in do. our life. Creation in some form and spirituality or mindfulness. And a wage and good food. And like with that, we have a better life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right, well, thanks again for coming on the show, Josh. Thank you. All right, have a great day. Thank you. Bye, everybody.